Hello YouTube! I am very happy to present you a video that I have had in the works for some time now. In this video, I'm going to walk you all through my map of the island of Sodor, as presented in the TV series. The island of Sodor is where Thomas and all the engines live, and it has a railway that spans from coast to coast called the Northwestern. It is a part of the British Isles, technically a part of England, off the northwest coast near the Lake District, with rail connections at Barrow and Furness. Thomas's creator, Wilbert Audrey, infamously spent years filling in his map of Sodor. The first incarnation dates back to 1950, and he continually worked on it until his death in 1997. The amount of detail and lore present on this map is absolutely astounding. Audrey was truly passionate about his creation. The TV series sticks to Audrey's map somewhat, but changed a lot of things. Around season 3 or so, they stopped sticking to the map entirely and just kind of did their own thing. And one of my favorite time waster hobbies is trying to map all of these TV locations out and how everything is connected via railway lines. There are many versions of the quote-unquote canon TV series map out there. We have the crappy Sam Wilkinson map from 2014 that tries to cram everything from every era of the show and the books into one, and it just does not work. Then you got this one from Japan that literally shows stuff like this on it. Yeah. And then you have this very recent map from 2020 that's a weird mix of CGI series and railway series. All of them are all a little different from each other, but they all make the same crucial mistake. They use Audrey's map and just add TV crap on top of it. The TV series made it very clear that the map the show stuck to is not the same as Audrey's in the very first episode, when they showed Knapford as the big station instead of Tidmouth. So using Audrey's map as a basis is just silly, because the TV series never stuck to it to begin with. I've built my own map, and I have consistently worked on it for over a year now, and I'm going to walk you all through it. But before we begin, let's keep a few things in mind. 1. This is predominantly a classic series map. That's seasons 1 through 7, with some hit in railway series elements sprinkled in to fill gaps where necessary. So railway series only things like the Coldy Fell, or CGI only things like the Arlesdale Railway, or Ulstead Castle, or Blue Mountain Quarry, will not be featured. As far as I'm concerned, the classic series, the railway series, and the CGI series are all totally different canons, and stick to very different maps. 2. While I did what I could to include everything from seasons 1 through 5 on this, there are a few things here and there I had to retcon to make this make any sense. The biggest retcon was Rusty to the Rescue. I will always hate the idea that the Narrow Gauge Railway stretches all the way to the mainland, and since it's never been really alluded to since, I did not feature that. So before you say, oh you forgot this set that appeared for one shot in one scene only, yes I'm aware. But this map will continue to evolve over time. And I'm sure people will point out things on this that will make me reconsider some things, which is totally fine, and I welcome that feedback. This is really just where I am right now with it. And lastly, and this is something that I even struggled with, you just have to accept that some locations change in appearance from season to season for any of this to work. Brendam Docks, Farquhar Quarry, Wellsworth, and the Hackenbeck Tunnel are all some of the biggest culprits of always changing how they look every season. This is all just meant to be fun, and really is just my own headcanon for all this stuff. I'm in no way saying any of this is fact. If you disagree, that's totally fine, and I'd love to see other people's takes on this map as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. There is a lot to unpack here. So let's start with the main line, which is depicted on the map in red. So I also have a rule of how to tell the sets apart, and it's the number of tracks seen on them. The main line is usually three tracks, with a couple exceptions. Two tracks is a branch line, and one track is either a tail end of a branch line in a rural area, or strictly a goods line. Any set we see with three tracks is very clearly the main line. So as we all know, the big station at the start of the line in the TV series is Knapford. Knapford is the terminus for all lines, and all mainline trains start and end here. The express starts here, so naturally, it's the very start of the line. It was a weird choice to make Knapford the big station instead of Tidmouth, but I can kind of understand why. The most recent Sodor map at the time of Season 1 was this one from the 70s, and it very incorrectly shows the main line terminating at Knapford. 
Before we go forward, let's talk about the harbor. Napford Harbor is the mainline harbor and exports fish and stone. It's the harbor that features in seasons 1 and 4. Stone from the Farquhar Quarry is brought here, as seen in Train Stops Play and Special Attraction. The Flying Kipper is also consistently collected from here. As we can see very clearly in Season 1 and in Season 2 concept art, the harbor is behind the station in the distance. Above the harbor and just behind the station is the shunting yard. The shunting yard is one of those locations, again, you just kind of have to accept changes appearance every season, just like Brendam Docks and the quarry. So whatever version of the shunting yard you like is what's here. I personally like the Season 2 one. Napford Sheds is also located here, which had a turntable in Season 1, and then, at some point along the way, was turned into a multi-road shed. Now we can start traveling along the main line. So this is one of the biggest changes to the map versus Audrey's. The main line starts at Tidmouth on Audrey's map and travels south to Napford. Since the TV's terminus is Napford, and Tidmouth is depicted as a main line station, I've switched the directions. The main line starts at Napford in the southwest corner of Sodor and travels north. Just past Napford is the bus depot and the junction for Thomas's branch line. I will talk more about this when we get to Thomas's branch. A little ways up is the bridge that crosses over the old harbor. Cross over the River Ells and we start approaching the second station, Lower Tidmouth. Lower Tidmouth is a stop for local trains only. The express does not stop here. Just north of that we start entering the town of Tidmouth. It's here that Tidmouth Sheds resides. And just behind that is Tidmouth Station. Tidmouth Station's a bit of a weird one. It's a junction for Duck's branch line and also the terminus of Thomas's branch line. I'll explain more about that in a bit. As far as I can tell, the express does stop at Tidmouth. The railway's coaling plant is at Tidmouth, and it has changed appearance a couple times since its introduction, notably gaining a huge loading ramp in Season 6. It only makes sense that the main place to refuel the engines is located at Tidmouth, where the majority of them are all stationed. Beyond Tidmouth, the line starts to curve east and goes into the countryside. In this sect of the countryside is Henry's Tunnel. Henry's Tunnel is depicted on the west of Sodor before Vickerstown on Audrey's map. Well, that just doesn't really fly on the TV map. As shown on multiple occasions, Henry's Tunnel is somewhere between Knapford and Wellsworth. Gordon starts at the express at Knapford, breaks down at the tunnel, Edward and Henry bring it to Wellsworth. In Thomas and the Trucks, Thomas is seen traveling through it before even reaching Ellsbridge, so that narrows down its placement even further. After Henry's Tunnel, the line travels over the River Ells again and reaches Ellsbridge. This is one of the craziest changes from Audrey's map, and I don't really understand why it was done. In the books, Ellsbridge is a small town in the countryside and the middle station on Thomas's branch line. He would stop here for water. For some reason, Ellsbridge was changed to be the junction station for Thomas's branch line, replacing Knapford. I have literally no idea why they did this. I guess they did this because they made Knapford the big station, so they needed another station to be the junction. Why Knapford couldn't just be both is beyond me. Anyways, Ellsbridge is also a local stop only. It's here that Thomas has to wait for local mainline trains. As shown in Thomas and the Breakdown Train, the Express does not stop here. After Ellsbridge, we approach another tunnel. Ellsbridge on one side, and Crosby on the other. There's a stretch of line before the next station, and it's on this stretch of line that James had his big accident in a field. And a little ways further is the area where Edward chased James down. We cross under the road bridge and begin the approach to Crosby. Crosby is infamously the station where Duck crashed into the barber shop, coming from the other direction. Not much to say about this one other than the Express also does not stop here, as shown in By George. Shortly after Crosby is the Girder Bridge over a cutting that Henry and Gordon were stopped by a cow. Henry is halted here going east, and then reverses back to Crosby. After that bridge is the ever picturesque viaduct crossing the river Riag? Reg? Re... Uh, whatever. The viaduct is always consistently shown to be before Wellsworth in the show. It's also one of a few mainline locations on this map that is inexplicably two tracks instead of three. I don't know why. We pass under a little road bridge and finally reach Wellsworth, also known as Edwards Station. There's a goods yard here for trucks coming up from Brendam Docks. They're sorted here by whoever's in the yard at the time, usually Edward, and wait for mainline engines to come collect them. This is also the junction for Edwards Branch Line to Brendam. I don't know why, but the direction of Wellsworth changes after Season 1. Gordon crosses the viaduct coming from Knapford and then stops at Wellsworth, whereas in Season 2, he goes through Wellsworth in the same direction and then reaches the viaduct in the direction of Crosby. 
The same thing happens in Season 3. Don't know why this was done, but either way, it confirms that it is a stop for the Express, but only when it is traveling eastbound for Vickerstone. After Wellsworth, we reach the junction. There's a crossing here, and then the tracks split off. If we keep going along the main line, we'll start the approach to Gordon's Hill. Gordon's Hill is shown as a series of curves and winds in Season 1, and I prefer that version of Gordon's Hill more so to the straight up and down it becomes later on, so I reflected that here on the map. Towards the bottom of the hill, the line crosses over the River Mara, and then passes over a crossing at the signal box for Marin. It was at this crossing that Arthur crashed into Duck on his first day. After that, we approach Maron. Maron is where Thomas hit the buffers and where James smashed the tar wagons. It changes the appearance drastically in Season 6 with a curved platform, and I personally prefer that version. The Express does not stop here, I don't think. The first three seasons very weirdly take place entirely west of Maron, and the east of Sodor isn't really explored until the Scarlet Way Railway was introduced. So what comes after Maron is really anyone's guess. The main line does cross over the huge river Hawan Ab, so I put the suspension bridge here. After that is Kronk and Kildane. Both are stations that have never appeared in the show. Kronk has technically as a tiny little country station, and I'll get into that in a bit. This is obviously not a mainline station, so it can't be here. This is where I start to draw from Audrey's map to fill in some gaps. The iOS book talks about how Kronk and Kildane are pretty busy center towns on Sodor. Kildane is the junction for the electric line, so it has a big engine facility, as well as a ballast plant and a motor rail terminal. Of course, these aren't shown in the TV show, but it makes me believe Kildane is a pretty busy and populated part of the island. So much so that this area deserved two stations. One actually in Kildane, and another west for Kronk. It's a real shame we never saw them in the show. Since we never see him, I can't say for sure, but I'm just going to say the Express doesn't stop at either of these stations. Down the line a bit, we pass another local stop. This little station. It has no official name, but the wiki calls it Baladrin. It's clearly on a three-track main line, so f*** it, it's Baladrin. As shown in Season 7, the Express does not stop at it. This stretch after Baladrin is weirdly vast and has nothing on it on Audrey's map, so let's try and fill it in a little bit. I like to think Henry's Forest is somewhere around here. It would make sense for a huge forest to be in an area that's not super populated. The line starts to climb another hill, and a little ways after that is the difficult bend. This is one of the few hit era things that I'm going to pull in to fill gaps. There has to be a hill somewhere before this bend, as those trucks and Thomas saves the day run away on it. And a little further beyond that is Kelstorp Road, another hit era station and the junction for the Kirk Ronan branch line. Not totally sure if the express stops here, but my guess is no. After Kelstorp Road, the line starts curving north. We pass by the ruins of Thorkell's castle and start heading towards Croven's Gate. Up ahead is a little junction to the stone cutting and transfer yard for the Scarlowy Railway. More on that later. Ahead of that is the dual gauge tunnel where the standard and narrow gauge trains run side by side. After the tunnel is the glorious Croven's Gate, the transfer station for the Scarlowy Railway. This is the third official stop for the Express. North of the station is the works, where all the engines go for maintenance, and on the other side of the line is the depot for the Scarlowy engines. It was here Edward met Scarlowy while waiting for his turn at the works. Now, I'm going to level with you guys. Everything beyond Croven's Gate to Vickerstown is just a total blur to me. I don't think this area of Sodor has really ever been touched on in the show. It's just unknown territory. Nothing but a long stretch that makes Vickerstown the station on the faraway part of the island where only the diesels work. You can fill in this area with just any sort of generic three track sets really. The main line does come to its end at Vickerstown. Unlike Audrey's map where the main line extends to the mainland, the main line does end here and that's actually consistent for the CGI series as well. British Rail, aka the other railway, reaches Vickerstown via a bridge from the mainland and there's a big exchange yard for goods between the two railways. And it was in this yard that Douglas found Oliver. A diesel depot is also located here for the diesels of the other railway to rest after they brought their trains. Since the area is usually infested with them, the Sodor engines don't particularly like coming here. Vickerstown Station is never clearly shown in the series until CGI. It is only briefly seen here in this one shot from Escape. So that is the main line. But believe it or not, that's actually one of the more simplistic lines on this map. Let's transition back to the west side and now talk about Thomas's branch line.
In my opinion, Thomas's branch line is the most confusing of all the lines on Sodor. Since Thomas is the main character, he appears everywhere, and it's sometimes hard to decipher what is actually his line and what isn't. For that same reason, a lot happens on this line, so there is so many locations to work out. So to unpack all of this, we'll need to start at Tidmouth. Okay, so I know Tidmouth is not really a place that many consider when thinking Thomas's branch line, especially since it literally doesn't touch it on Audrey's map. However, Thomas is consistently seen traveling to Tidmouth in seasons 2 and 3. We have to take into account that the sheds for the branch line engines are also located here. After season 2, the branch line engines all just stay at Tidmouth sheds, but no matter what shed they stay in, they are all still at Tidmouth. So Thomas's branch officially starts at Tidmouth and travels along the main line for a little while. He stops at Lower Tidmouth, as we see in Down the Mine, travel across the bridge over Old Harbor, and reach the junction. But before I get into the junction, let's talk about Knapford. I had to actually check this, and believe it or not, Thomas is only seen traveling to Knapford with Annie and Clarabelle once in all of seasons 1 through 5. Season 6 onwards, he's seen consistently traveling out of Knapford. The way I see it, the service starts at Tidmouth, travels south and turns onto the branch line. But on the first return journey, Thomas goes to Knapford and then back up to Farquhar. And for the rest of the day, he alternates between the two every other return journey. His very last service terminates at Tidmouth, where he then retires to either the branch line shed or the big roundhouse. Okay, so back to the junction. The bus depot is here. This is where Bertie lives and where Thomas met Bertie for the first time. So I'm aware the junction is facing the wrong direction on my map. Trains leaving Napford are consistently shown going the other direction. But here's my defense. I don't care. <laughs> Thomas is even seen going on the wrong line on it once, so it's f it, it doesn't matter. We see trains frequently going the wrong way on sets, or on sets they shouldn't be on throughout the show, so I'm just gonna mark it up to inconsistency. So once we pass the bus depot, we are officially on Thomas's branch line. Just a little ways down the line is the first level crossing. After that is what I call the intro bridge, aka the bridge that appears in the intro of every episode. The line curves northeast and approaches Dryaw. Dryaw is the airfield station. Harold the helicopter lives here, although he has helipads in a couple places. After Dryaw, the line crosses over the harbor line on this bridge. A little ways up is the junction for the harbor line. Let's talk about the harbor line for a sec. So on Audrey's map, the harbor line is the original track for the branch line. It is still operated, but solely just for goods, usually by Toby and Percy. The same is true here. The line branches off just before Tory Wreck and goes under the branch line. It travels through a wooded area, then along the canal, and then past a helipad for Harold. It goes under the main line to the original Knapford Harbor. This was the original harbor before the main line existed. Once the main line was built to Knapford, and the bigger harbor was constructed behind it, this one fell into disrepair. Thomas, Percy, and Trevor helped to rebuild it, and it now exports light goods. The actual name of the harbor has never been revealed officially, so I'm just going to call it Old Harbor. Back to the main branch. So the harbor line connects to the main branch just before Tory Wreck. I've changed my mind several times on what station this is. I once said it was Hackenbeck, and then I said it was a good station on the harbor line. But I finally settled on it being Tory Wreck, and here's why. It's widely accepted that this station is Tory Wreck, but it isn't actually officially named. This station, however, is said to be a goods station. This station is for goods, not passengers. It only makes sense that the goods station would be placed right where the goods line connects with the main. It's a station that exists for goods to be brought and unloaded. And as stated in Thomas Gets Bumped, Thomas doesn't actually stop here. He just carries on right through. If this was a station on the goods line, why on earth would Thomas pass through it daily with Annie and Clarabelle carrying passengers? It's definitely somewhere on the main branch. I'll get to that other unnamed station in a bit. So after Tory Wreck, we travel under this road bridge and start approaching Ellsbridge. We discussed Ellsbridge earlier already. This is the mainline junction where Thomas connects with local trains. There are engine facilities and a rolling stock shed here. Thomas then crosses over the main line via a series of points, I imagine, and then carries onto his branch line again. Right after Ellsbridge is, of course, the Ellsbridge itself, crossing the River Ells. Thomas went fishing here once. The road runs alongside the railway for a short while. Just after the bridge is this bit of curved line with a buffer stop. 
And this little set here was actually the most important part of piecing together Thomas's line. Because once you realize it, suddenly the whole branch makes so much more sense. After this point, the rest of the branch line is single track, and everything before it is double. The second line ends at that buffer stop. It totally makes sense why the first half of the line is double track, because it's the secondary line for the main line, aka the loop line. I was switched off the main line onto the loop. I had to go all round and back again. As shown in James and the Coaches and Whistles and Sneezes, sometimes local trains are diverted along Thomas's line from Knapford. The double track allows them to pass Thomas without either having to wait at a passing loop. From this point on, the line just continues into the rural countryside, so there's no need for a second track. Trust me, everything just makes so much more sense now. So after that, the line starts to climb a little and we pass by fields of flowers. And just ahead is the Cricket Field and Bulgy's Bridge. I know it's sacrilegious to place Bulgy's Bridge on Thomas's line and not Duck's, but the bridge is consistently being shown to be on Thomas's branch line in seasons 4 onwards. Maybe Duck was just on Thomas's branch in Bulgy for some reason. Who knows? After Bulgy's Bridge, we reach Maithwaite. I personally prefer the version of Maithwaite in Season 5 that is just single track. You can say the version in Season 6 onwards with the second track and platform is just a passing loop. After Maithwaite, the line climbs some more as it weaves up the hills towards the heart of Sodor. We pass by the beautiful water mill, and then through some river marshland where the ever iconic windmill is. Terence's Field isn't far from here. Once we pass that, we're in Hackenbeck Tunnel. On the other side of the tunnel is the little halt for Mrs. Kindly's Cottage. There's a little crossing ahead with no gates. And just after that is Hackenbeck. And I'm saying that the unnamed station everyone says is Toy Rack is actually Hackenbeck. And here's why. For one, it's a single track station. So it's definitely somewhere above Ellsbridge. Second, in Train Stops Play, Stepney brings his trucks here after going through the Hackenbeck Tunnel. This station is Hackenbeck, this is the hill I die on. After Hackenbeck, the road and rail travel alongside each other for a while. We pass over the river on this cool little bridge, and finally reach the last regular service station, Farquhar. Farquhar is where Thomas's service usually terminates. At Farquhar, there are sidings for goods and a stone cutting shed for trucks from the Farquhar Quarry. If we continue past the station and go left, the line will become a short tramway where Mavis stuck. Not far after that is the bridge where Toby tightroped. The line starts to wind and climb as it traverses through the hills. We'll pass the points for the abandoned tracks to the car ferry over the nearby lake. My headcanon is that they built a car ferry years ago and then abandoned it when they extended the line west and built a bridge over the river instead. Why they built a car ferry that could carry only one wagon at a time across it and didn't just build a bridge first is beyond me. But you know, typical backwards Sodor logic. The line crosses over the dirt road to the quarry, and it is here that Thomas was stopped by a policeman. The track then curves east and goes through a rocky gorge until finally arriving at the Farquhar Quarry. Farquhar Quarry, also known as Center Island Quarry, is where Mavis works. Stone is collected here and brought down the line to Knapford Harbor where it's loaded into ships and barges like Bulstrode. The quarry is one of those locations you unfortunately just have to accept changes its appearance almost every time we see it. I personally prefer the way it looks in Season 3 the best. Let's go back to Farquhar. So Thomas's regular service terminates here, but the line doesn't end. On some occasions, as told to us in Thomas and Percy's Christmas Adventure, his service travels further along the line to the mountain village in Elfstead. The line continues past Farquhar, passes the junction to the lead mine, where Thomas fell down a mine. The line continues across the road into the heart of Sodor, past the lonely signal box, and right at the junction. It goes past a waterfall, through a valley cutting, until finally arriving at Elfstead. The line officially ends here and does not go further. I like to think that Thomas runs like a special extended service to here on weekends or something. Let's go back to that junction we went right at. This is the area of Sodor that Toby explored in Toby's Discovery. I like to think Thomas's branch was actually a link to a huge, now defunct, mining network in the heart of Sodor. The stone quarry, the gold mine, the lead mine, etc and the branch provided a means of getting it all to the harbor. Once these mines were dried up, these lines were abandoned. If we go left at the junction, the line climbs north into the mountains. 
If we go right at the next junction, the line terminates at the old gold mine, which was also serviced by the Mid-Sodor Railway. More on that in a bit. It was here that Toby found Bertram. The area was reopened and turned into a tourist exhibit. Since it is accessed by only Thomas's branch line, Thomas and Toby helped with the reconstruction. Bertram stays here and runs back and forth here on a section of track giving rides to visitors, with no actual link to the Scarlowy Railway, hence why we don't see him again. If we go left at the junction, the line will continue to climb north until we reach the ruins of Ulfstead Castle. Yeah, this is different to the CGI one. Different cannons. This was also reopened to tourism along with the gold mine. And that, my friends, is the entirety of Thomas's branch line. So let's travel all the way back to Tidmouth now and talk about Duck's branch line, aka the Little Western. If you want beach and sun, then the Little Western is the place to come to. Just like in the books, the Little Western starts at Tidmouth, as seen in Season 3. Just north of the station is the Tidmouth Tunnel, which is beside a lake. On the other side is the Sunshiny Coast. Tidmouth Halt is here, as well as a small yard and shed for goods. The station is located between two tunnels in this open gap between cliffs. On the other side of the second tunnel is the run past the beach. That fun rock tunnel is here, as is this gorgeous set. This is one of my favorite sets in the series. It just looks like a painting. We pass by the beach with the lighthouse, where Bolstrode currently resides, and round the bend to Haltra. This is the middle station of the line. After Haltra, the line starts to curve inward away from the sea towards Arlsberg. And I'm going to be a bit daring here and say that this little station in Season 7 is Arlsberg. I don't know what the wiki calls it. I think they call it Suttery or something. But to me, it makes sense as a station on Duck's line. We never actually see a station called Arlsberg in the show. And this is a model series map, so the Arlsdale Railway isn't canon to it. So, f*** it. This is Arlsberg. Since the station only has one platform on a siding, I like to think Arlsberg is a goods-only station for goods coming in from the harbor. Similar to Tory Rack on Thomas's line. The line runs along the river and above the town here. It then crosses over the River Arl and past the junction for the Arlsberg Harbor, before curving east again and terminating at Callan, the station Oliver tore Scruffy in half. Callan is a weird one. It's very clearly based on Arlsberg West in the books, and it also is very clearly on Duck's Line. So as far as I'm concerned, they're the same location. Callan is just a bit further north. This is also a transfer station for services on Toby's old railway, which I will get into in a bit. There's a goods yard here at Callan, and a turntable. Oliver's Shed is also here. The line does continue from Callan on a goods line up to Callan Castle, aka Castle Lock. Most maps place Callan Castle in the north of Sodor near Peel Godred, and I disagree with that. It's called Callan Castle, so it's obviously near Callan. And since Callan is the Arlsberg West stand-in, then they both must be on the west coast. There's a loop here at the castle that crosses a causeway. Now that's the end of Duck's Line. However, the tracks don't end here. Let's keep venturing north and explore the Coastal Run, aka Arthur's Line. Okay, so now this is a huge change I recently made to the map. Arthur's Line is the one that runs to the fishing village. And like the Sam Wilkinson map, I originally had that as the branch to Norumbi. However, I just wasn't happy with it. The fishing village just didn't feel right on that side of the island. In Season 5, the engines are consistently shown traveling along the Little Western to get to it. And not to mention the plethora of beach stations that there are on the west side of Sodor. The majority of times you see engines traveling to a beach station, they're coming from the south with the beach on the west side. And I didn't want to just throw a bunch of stations on the Little Western. But as I was putting this video together, I had a coming to Jesus moment, and it hit me. Suddenly, everything made sense. The fishing village in the classic series is in Harwick. Okay, so here's my headcanon. So the Fishing Village line is a fairly recent development. In Season 3, they finished construction on Duck's line and that opened with services to Callan. However, work continued up the coast. By Season 5, they had reached the Fishing Village at Hartwick. However, the low number of trains due out didn't really demand its own engine. 
so available engines would just be sent up when a train was due. However, by the time of Season 7, the line to the fishing village had become so busy that it demanded its own engine. Q. Arthur. The line continues from Callan and works its way back up the coast. The first station is what I call Church, aka where Percy and Thomas brought the good luck package to Mrs. Kindly's daughter's wedding. The line leaves the road as the track continues along the coastline. It passes a second lighthouse. Along this stretch is the track with the pier rail Thomas fell off coming from the fishing village. The final and most northern station on Sodor is Harwick, and this is the station that Toby ventured to in Special Attraction. Every year Harwick has a big town festival. Harwick is a fishing town, so naturally it's the home of the fishing village. The line ends here. Arthur collects trucks of fish from here and runs them to the big harbors like Natford and Brendam where the big ships depart. There's also a shed here that I like to think he stays at. So now, let's go back down to Arlesburg Harbor and talk about Toby's old railway. <laughs> In the TV series, Toby's Old Railway was on Sodor. This is evident by the station names Lower Arlesburg and Arlesdale End. It's also directly referenced in the song. My guess is that the season 1 crew misread that 70s map and confused the Arlesdale Railway for a separate standard gauge one and just said, fuck it, this is where Toby worked. It was a standard gauge railway, but separate from the Northwestern. Toby's old line serviced Arlesburg Harbor, and he would traverse goods to and from it and the inland farms and towns. When Duck's branch line was being constructed, the old tracks were repurposed and connected to the Little Western. We never actually see Arlesburg Harbor in the model series. A lot of people say the harbor in All at Sea is Arlesburg, but I disagree. That's just Brendam. Arlesburg Harbor was never seen in the show until the CGI series, and as I already stated, it's a different canon to the classic series. The line started at the harbor and traveled along the river Arl. It passes by what is now Toby's Windmill, crosses over the river via rickety old bridge, and stops at Lower Arlsberg. It was here Tapa met Toby for the first time. The river curls away from the line as the line starts to ascend. It passes by McColl Farm. McColl Farm was only seen once in the classic series, of which it was stated to be on Toby's old line. My old branch line runs out there, sir. Remember? Now I know that's going to be controversial since McColl Farm is so associated with Thomas's line in later seasons. But if that's the case, that means Toby's old railway would have connected to Thomas's line, which is just so dumb to me, and it creates so many continuity issues with season one. So screw it, it's on Toby's line. The line continues up the mountain until it reaches the little village in Toby and the Flood. This is the middle station on the line, and it has a passing loop. I wasn't sure what to name this village, so I just pulled from Audrey's map of the Arlesdale and called it Marthwaite. The line crosses the wooden bridge at the end of the village that floated away in the flood, and then starts to curl as it climbs up the mountains. Through these mountains, we pass the ruins of Castle Arl. We then come to the Great Dam. The dam holds the water of one of the big lakes up here. After the dam is this mountain village station. The wiki calls it Balahu, and I have no idea why. The only episode it appears in specifically says it's on Toby's line. It's needed for the village feast on Toby's branch line. I decided to call it Arlesdale, as we have an Arlesdale end, but no regular Arlesdale. After that line crosses a trestle bridge and weaves around another lake. The line finally halts at Arlesdale end, where Toby's shed is located. After the line closed in Season 1, Topham bought Toby and this little line fell into disrepair. It wasn't until Season 5 when Oliver, traveling from Callan, was accidentally switched onto this line and crashed into Toby's old shed that Topham considered reopening it. Off screen at some point, Topham bought the line and reopened it, and Toby was relocated to his old stomping grounds. From Season 5 onwards, it seems Toby stays in his old shed at Arlesdale End instead of Tidmouth. When the line was reopened, the service was extended to the nearest station at Callan, as we see in Toby Had a Little Lamb. So now that we have the whole west of Sodor covered, let's transition to the south and take a look at Edward's branch line. I have to say, Edward's line in the show is the most consistent with Audrey's vision and was the easiest to piece together. 
gotta love that season two consistency. So naturally, Edward's line branches at Wellsworth. As stated in the iOS book, Edward's service actually begins at Tidmouth, hence why he sleeps there. In the TV series, it actually starts at Knapford, as per Wrong Road and Edward's exploit. It runs along the main line, stopping at all the local stops until it reaches Wellsworth. Then he carries on down the branch to Brendam. The junction for the branch is west of the station and curls south. Nearby is the Vicar of Wellsworth's Orchard, where Trevor lives. The ruins of Suttery Castle mark the beginning of Suttery. Croc's Scrapyard is here, where Edward collects scrap on occasion and then is taken up to Peel Godred. More on that in a bit. The first station, as seen in Birdie's Chase, is Lower Suttery. I have no idea why Suttery has a Lower Suttery and not a regular Suttery, but whatever. It was here Birdie missed Edward and where Percy ran away to. After Lower Suttery, the line merges into a single track. The line climbs and crosses over the road via this girder bridge, and then rolls down the hill into Upper Brendam. This station is Upper Brendam, not Hackenbeck as some others have said, as confirmed by Tom's Props on Twitter. Apparently the model crew made station signs for this model, but just never applied them. I don't know why. After Upper Brendam, the line crosses the river via this three-sectioned girder bridge. And finally, the line terminates at Brendam, at this station here. This is, of course, the location of Brendam Docks. Brendam Docks is massive in the TV series. This is the docks that appears in seasons 2 and 3 and 5 onwards. Like I said earlier, it's a location that is never consistent in appearance, so you just have to accept that. I personally love the season 2 version of Brendam. Just add Cranky somewhere along here and you got a perfect Brendam dock set. A goods line to the China clay pit starts here, and it's along this that Bill and Ben brought clay to the docks to be loaded into ships. However, in Heroes, the clay pit is destroyed in a huge avalanche. And barring double teething troubles, which could have taken place before Heroes for all we know, Derek is in BR Green, which means it would have been around the same time timeline-wise, Bill and Ben haven't been seen working at it since. It seems they were relocated to Farquhar Quarry indefinitely until the clay pits were reopened, as they are always seen there with Mavis for the remainder of the model series. It is seen again in the CGI series, but like I said before, different canons. So since the clay pits never reopens in the classic series, I have the line to it marked as closed. Alrighty, now let's transition over to the Peel Godred branch. This is going to be a fun one. So my vision of the branch in the show is wildly different to how it's portrayed in Audrey's universe. In the Railway series canon, this line is electrified and is run by a fleet of electric engines. They're never seen in the books and are only mentioned once. In the TV series, the Peel Godred line is a single track goods line. Just like on Audrey's map, the line branches off at Kill Lane and heads north through the valley between the two mountain ranges. The first stop is this station, the Kronk we see in the show. Here's my justification. On Audrey's map, there's a small village in this area north of Kronk called Kronk Abbey. As a little station is called Kronk, it's technically still the same name, just Sands Abbey. It's a single track station in the middle of nowhere, a perfect fit for this spot. In the pack miniseries, it reappears with a passing loop, which makes sense since this is the middle station on the line. Further up the line is that part that runs through the spooky wooded area in Season 5. Beyond that is Old Bailey's Station, where Henry was spooked. In my head canon, this crossing is actually a crossing for the now abandoned Midsodor Railway, akin to how the Cambrian and the Welsh Highland cross over each other in Wales. I know that track is standard gauge, but I will get further into that in a bit. Beyond that is the area where Henry's trucks derailed, and then beyond that is the viaduct that was closed and haunted Henry. It's never seen on screen, only mentioned. And above that is the line's terminus at Peel Godred, aka the station by the lake. The big green engine was taking a goods train to the station by the lake. Peel Godred is only seen in the hit era, I believe, shown as a station raised above the town. Eh, fine by me. The real end of this line, and the industry the line services, is the Sodor Ironworks, aka the smelter's yard. The iOS book says that Peel Godred has an aluminum works, which isn't that different from an iron works. This is the dreaded area that Ari and Bert work and the steam engines dare not to go. Metal and scrap from Croc's scrapyard and elsewhere is brought here and smelted down. 
In Stepney Gets Lost, Stepney took a wrong turn near Kildane and ended up here, where he nearly met his fate. Let's finish off the standard gauge stuff by looking over the final branch line on this map. The one to Kirk Ronan. The Kirk Ronan branch line is a recent development, and it was constructed in Season 5. In Season 8, Kelstorp was reconstructed as a bigger station to allow a separate platform for the branch line. The line splits off west of Kelstorp Road and gradually descends as it goes towards the ocean. Along this stretch is Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory, very inconveniently located at the bottom of a hill. I originally had this at the bottom of Gordon's Hill near Marin, but I thought that it was stupid for one of the main line's three tracks to just end at the Chocolate Factory, so I placed it on this line. The line then continues south past Rolf's castle, as we see in Season 6. This is the castle Alicia Bati performed at. This station is stupidly called Tidmouth Bay in Season 5, and I don't get why. It's nowhere near Tidmouth, even on Sam's map, or even near water. So screw it, it's Rolf's castle. I'm also aware that this and the prop for the castle Toby discovered are the same ones, but I don't think they're meant to be the same location. Ulfsted Castle reopens with a single track in front of it, while Rolf's Castle has a station building and multiple through tracks. Obviously the same set was used in Season 5, but I don't think they're meant to be the same location. It then travels past some farmland before approaching the town of Kirk Ronan. The line terminates here, at the beautiful Canopy Station. This is where Gordon infamously, uh, left his mark. And that, my friends is the entirety of the Standard Gauge Railway Network. However, we are not done. We still have lots of narrow gauge to discuss. Let's start with everyone's favorite, Scarlowy Railway. So I'm just going to preface this by saying that I really don't like how the Scarlowy Railway looks in season six onwards. Season 6 is okay, because they didn't stray too far, but 7 onwards just feels like a completely different railway to the comfy one introduced in 4. For the sake of keeping my head from exploding, all of the locations on this map are only seasons 4 and 5. So naturally, we'll start at Crovin's Gate, the terminus for the Scarlowy Railway. The sheds for the engines are here, just behind the station. The station itself is where the narrow gauge meets standard gauge. Departing the station, the line curves. There's a small junction here where a short line spurs off. The line goes through this tunnel and into this industrial yard. This is the facility where slate and stone from the quarry are cut and transferred to standard gauge trucks to be taken elsewhere. In the books, the Scarlowy engine sheds are on a raised wharf where slate is loaded into the standard gauge trucks. Obviously, that's not present in the TV series, so there has to be some area where these transfers happen. It was in this yard that Boulder destroyed an engine shed. Back to the main line. The line curves past farmland where Sir Handel was halted by sheep. Then there's another junction that forms the loop line back to Crovin's Gate for returning trains, explaining why they always come past the sheds and into the station in the same direction they departed from. In aerial shots, we can see the line keeps going past the sheds in the distance. The first stop on the line is Krosny Kern. I hope I'm saying that right. Before it is a bit of line that runs along a retaining wall, and where Duncan derailed himself rock and rolling. After Krosny Kern, the line travels along the road for a short bit before crossing over it. This is where Sir Handel and George faced off. The railway crosses the river for the first time and heads up towards Glenock. Glenock is this pretty station hidden in the trees. After Glenock, the line starts to climb into the mountains and enters the forest of the Scarlowy Valley. In this forest is the little halt for the picnic area, and then the line crosses the river again over this bridge. Not long after that, the forest ends, and the line traverses through open fields, nowhere near the road. It was on this loneliest part of the line Reneus' valve gear jammed. A little further ahead is another bridge. This is the bridge that was washed away in Special Funnel. Right after the bridge is Reneus Tunnel. In this tunnel, Peter Sam got his funnel knocked off, and Duncan got stuck at the other end of. We're high in the hills now and starting to reach civilization again. The next stop is Reneus, the station by the waterfall. A little engine shed is located here. The line splits in two to create a loop here. The left line goes to Lakeside, and the right to Scarlowy. We'll go left. 
The line takes us to the Big Lake, where it crosses it via a stone causeway. The ruins of Reneus Castle are here. Lakeside is the next station, and it is here the trains terminate before heading back down the line. Peter Sam left the refreshment lady behind here. Leaving Lakeside, the line goes around the lake and traverses over the viaduct before reaching a Y. Continuing along the main line takes us to Scarlowy Station, and it is here that Sir Handel derailed himself. Scarlowy Station is also the point where trains go into the slate mine jeer off the main track. In trucks, Peter Sam left his coaches here and pushed his empty wagons up to the mine. The mine is in the mountains and requires some climbing to get to. The line travels over a gorge here via the old iron bridge where Duncan was spooked by a ghost engine. The line continues to climb a gradient where Peter Sam's trucks ran away before finally arriving at the slate mine. In the TV series, the slate mine is high in the mountains and was also serviced by both the Scarlowy and the Mid Sodor. Back at Scarlowy Station, there are two tracks that go in different directions. The one that goes left is the one along the main to the mine. There's another that goes straight, and I'm just going to say that the engine sheds from Season 6 onwards are located there. Man, the Scarlowy engines sure do have a lot of sheds, don't they? I like to think that these facilities were shared by the Scarlowy and the Mid Sodor, which makes sense because the Mid Sodor terminated at Scarlowy. Engines crossing the mountain road on the Mid Sodor could rest and refuel here before the journey back over the mountains. So that is the Scarlowy Railway. Now, let's talk the Mid Sodor. The Mid Sodor Railway might be the biggest change I've made to this map from Audrey's. It completely changes everything, but works into how the TV series portrays it so much better. As the Coley Fell Railway does not exist in the TV series, the Mid Sodor was the main method of transport through Sodor's big mountain range. As evident by the several sets shared between the two railways, the Mid Sodor and the Scarlowy were owned by the same company and shared some of the same tracks. Not dissimilar to the Festiniog and the Welsh Highland Railways in Wales. The Mid Sodor had access to the big slate mine in the mountains and terminated trains at Scarlowy Railway stations. Scarlowy Station is the terminus for the Mid Sodor, as shown in Bulldog. Passengers would transfer here for Scarlowy trains to Croven's Gate. Special trains would sometimes run further, as we saw in You Can't Win, when a Mid Sodor train ran all the way to Croven's Gate. Leaving Scarlowy, the Mid Sodor travels right at the Y and into the mountains. It goes through this gorge with the slate mine operating above it. It was in this gorge that Scarlowy got caught in an avalanche en route to Boulder Quarry. Speaking of Boulder Quarry, that was one of the many quarries serviced by the Mid Sodor that was abandoned when the railway was closed. In Rusty and the Boulder, Topham decided to reopen the quarry to mine rock, and Scarlowy engines were allowed up the old tracks to it. After Boulder wreaked havoc, Topham had the quarry closed again, and these tracks were again left abandoned. Traveling left at the junction continues along the main track through the mountains. This series of curves and winds is what makes up the mountain road. Near the peak is the tunnel where Falcon derailed and nearly fell to his death. After the long tunnel, the line starts to descend and travels past some locations marked on the Mid-Sodor map shown in Sleeping Beauty. There's a little halt for Elm Farm, which we never see on screen. And then after that is what is simply called Old Station. At this station was the main sheds where Smudger was turned into a generator and where Duke was buried. The area is now totally abandoned and left in ruins. The line would continue west until it reached the Peel Godred line and crossed over it. On the other side is Old Bailey Station. Now I know the track we see here in the show is Standard Gauge, and I know we technically see Henry on it once, but yeah, I'm retconning that. I love the idea of there being a crossover point between Standard and Narrow Gauge, and this is the only place on the whole map it could possibly happen. I also love the idea of this track being totally abandoned, because later on in By George, they pull it up and pave over it. I like to think Old Bailey Station was restored by the Island's Preservation Society, but isn't actually maintained for real railway use. After that, there's a junction. I tried my best to keep this part of the line as accurate to the Mid Sodor map shown in the show, which is just the Isle of Wight railway map flipped upside down. Heading south takes the line past Duke's Village, and then to its west terminus at Valesbridge. Valesbridge is never seen on screen, however we know it must be some sort of harbor. 
One of Sodor's longest rivers, the Hawan Ab, runs through here, and it's stated that in You Can't Win, that Falcon took the train home for the passengers to catch their boat. Falcon took Duke's passengers to the boat. I like to think a steamboat service operated out of here up to Peel Godred, and to the south of the island at Brendam and beyond, which of course all existed before the Standard Gauge Railway was built. It's also called Vale's Bridge, which if the origins of English names mean anything, means there is a bridge here, a bridge over water perhaps. In the other direction at the junction, through the tunnel, is the gold mine, which was shared with the Standard Gauge Railway. I think it's pretty widely accepted that Bertram was a mid-Sodor engine. And that, my friends, is the TV map of the island of Sodor. The amount of time I have spent piecing together this thing is... embarrassing. But what can I say? I love this shit. The fact there are so many inconsistencies just makes it that much more fun to try and piece together. It's like a challenge. If everything on Sodor was perfectly straight-laced and impeccable, there'd be no fun in trying to map it all out. Before they are inevitably mentioned in the comments, let me just go and acknowledge some of the locations I did not mark on this map, because I still haven't quite figured them out yet. The Sports Field Halt. This has to be somewhere on Thomas's line below Ellsbridge. The Cement Works. I guess this could be on the Kirk Ronan line? Or possibly near Brendam? Not totally sure. The Coal Mine in Season 5. Haven't worked this one out yet either, but I'd like to place it somewhere in the mining network in the heart of Sodor. The Pax Yard. I guess this could be somewhere on the Peel Godred line, but again, I am not sure. The Beach Station in Thomas and Stepney. This could easily be somewhere on the coastal run, but I'm hesitant to place it there because Thomas refers to being on his branch line in the scene with it. Thomas's branch line barely touches the ocean, so the only place I can really think it could go is southwest of Old Harbor on the harbor line. But does this even make sense? Eh, still working this out. Stepney's branch line. My headcanon is that this is the Bluebell Railway on the mainland, just an alternate universe version of it. So it's not on this map. Just like how I retconned Rusty being able to travel to Vickerstown, I retcon him being able to travel to here too. The Three Bridges set. Yeah, I have no idea, guys. I thought at one point this could be near Ellsbridge, but even then it was a stretch. Misty Valley. No idea. Any of the locations in Magic Railroad. Guys, Magic Railroad isn't canon. Let's be real. So that's it, folks. I hope you all found this video informative, and I do welcome all of your feedback. If you have any idea of where to place some of the places I just mentioned, or have a completely different workaround, please do say so below. I love discussion on this topic. Perhaps one day I'll make a video like this for the CGI series map. Granted, that's a whole can of worms I'm not sure I want to even open. So we'll see. The link to the full res JPEG of this map is in the description. Feel free to do what you want with it. I will see you all next time.